Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are, and thank you for joining us here. Today, I am excited to share with you the latest advancements in the field of cement additives, enabling a reduction of CO2 in cement and concrete. I will start with a brief introduction to the global CO2 issue in the construction industry, with a particular focus on the sources of CO2 and how specialty chemicals help reducing it. I will then move into specifically how cement additives are enabling cement producers to reduce their embodied carbon, including the newest range of CO2 cost reducers technology and the GCP Dash additive intelligence tool. Finally, I will present two case studies with cement plants reducing their, body, their embodied carbon by means of reducing their use of fossil fuels and by means of reducing the clinker content. Before I get started, uh, in the rare event that you haven't met GCP before, please allow me to introduce GCP. The history dates back to early 1930s when a company named Dewey and Almi was contacted by a concrete producer willing to produce a three-lane highway with a central passing uh, high-speed lane of a different color, of a darker color. The producer was looking to introduce carbon black in the mixed design, but was uh, facing a rheological issue in doing so. Dew and Delmi eventually developed and introduced uh, a technology of dispersants, and notably lignosulfonate, that enabled the producer to homogeneously disperse the carbon black and at the same time improve the rheology and the water, reduce the water demand of concrete, and if added uh, in the manufacturing process of cement, also to reduce the specific energy consumption of the grinding process of cement. That was the day cement additives and concrete admixtures were born. Dewey and Dalmi was eventually acquired in 1954 by Grace, and in 2016, the division of uh, the specialty construction chemicals of GRACE, named the GRACE Construction Product at the time, spun off from GRACE and formed GCP. Since the introduction of the very first uh, additives for cement and concrete in the 1930s, several new technologies were introduced. And I'm pr proud to say the majority of them by GRACE and GCP. Starting in the 1960s and 70s uh, with the ECHA2 high efficiency grinding aids and the TDA quality improvers, just about when the oil crisis and the increasing energy cost were pulling demand for them. In the 1990s, Grace introduced uh, a technology named CBA that was allowing an increase of strengths at all ages, including late age strengths, and eventually allowing cement producers to replace clinker with limestone. This technology was followed in the 2000s by the ESC family for early strength enhancement, also allowing cement producers to reduce the clinker content and replace it with other supplementary cement tissues materials, such as slag, fly ash, and natural pozzolans. Other, intro, other technologies were introduced since then, notably synchro chromium reducers, the customized solutions for quality improvers, and uh, grinding aids based on renewable raw materials. Importantly, though, um, GCP has also recently introduced uh, a family of additives named Tavero VM, which are intended to produce uh, cements in vertical roller mills and lower the prehydration of these cements, therefore achieving higher strengths and more durable products. Also, GCP introduced the GCP Dash additive technology and the CO2 cost reducers range, which I will speak about in a while. Before getting there, please also allow me to introduce myself very briefly. I'm Ricardo Stoppa, a global marketing manager at GCP for cement additives and for the CO2 programs in cement and concrete. 
I, I was uh, um, a technical guy for, uh, for uh, the majority of my career, eventually leading the global cement and R&D um, and technical service organization in uh, GCP and GRACE, eventually contributing to the introduction of uh, technologies such as the CO2 cost reducers, the Tavero VM, improved CBAs, Synchro, GCP Dash, and the customization platform. But more importantly, I am very passionate about cement and reducing CO2. And I have just found, I think this uh, on the bottom right, you can see my, my first article, which I've co-authored on the environmental uh, handbook for cement plants in 2014. And I think I was presenting cement and CO2 uh, first in 2015 and 2016. And there's a picture of a younger myself in Abu Dhabi. So, the CO2 issue for the construction industry. I think we are all aware of the fact that CO2 emissions are uh, becoming an issue and that there is an increase in demand for more sustainable construction materials. The construction industry is uh, taking a very proactive role in doing so and achieving a lower embodied carbon in concrete uh, structures. Unfortunately, the construction industry is under scrutiny because it contributes to a significant extent to the total man-made emissions, approximately 11% according to certain estimates, of which maybe 7 to 8% is coming from cement alone. So with that in mind, cement producers are trying to reduce their carbon footprint and this is uh, certainly a subject where specialty construction chemicals can play an important role. Now, if you look at that uh, at a more granular uh, uh, level, you can break down the CO2 emissions by the source. The pie chart to the right here uh, shows a case study with a concrete mix with a total embodied carbon of 250 kilograms of CO2 per cubic meter of concrete. And you can see that approximately two thirds or 68% of the CO2 emissions are associated with the, the production and dispatch of cement. But also importantly, you see that there are other sources of CO2 emissions and notably the extraction and use of uh, other raw materials such as the aggregates and uh, the transportation of uh, concrete uh, to the uh, final uh, place. Now, uh, GCP has developed uh, a complete portfolio of products and solutions that help uh, reduce the carbon also in this context, and I will show that at the next slide. But coming back to the CO2 emissions associated with cement, you see that if you just take the cement, uh, the CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuels in cement, as well as uh, the CO2 emissions associated with the calcination process, or in other words, what is emitted uh, by the decomposition of calcium carbonate into calcium oxide and CO2, that account in this case study for approximately 50% of the total CO2. And this is why I'm going to show you two case studies associated with the reduction of fossil fuels in one case, and with the reduction of a clinker in, and therefore of the CO2 from calcination in the other case. So I promised you a very brief summary of uh, how in general specialty chemicals can help uh, cement and concrete producers lower their embodied carbon. And here it is. So uh, the range of products developed by GCP um, is able to help reduce the carbon footprint uh, in various areas of the entire value chain of the construction uh, process, starting from uh, uh, the aggregates, where the Clarina range, range is able to reduce the embodied carbon uh, associated with the extraction and transportation of uh, uh, the aggregates, where uh, of course, Optiva and Tavero uh, additives are enabling cement producers to reduce their embodied carbon with solutions for concrete producers such as Adva and Zyla for reducing cement and water in concrete production. And also, very interestingly, with a uh, very wide range of products for durability 
that uh, allows uh, um, a, a better quality and more durable uh, concrete to be placed. Uh, for example, improving uh, the alkali uh, silica reaction uh, or reducing it actually, um, reducing uh, the potential for uh, corrosion of the reinforcement uh, bars, uh, for example, by improving uh, um, the freeze thaw uh, resistance and, and, and so on. Also, very importantly, we mentioned that, that uh, the transportation of concrete can contribute significantly to the total embodied carbon. GCP has developed and introduced a technology named Verify, which is an in-transit concrete uh, management uh, system that allows uh, to reduce the over-design of concrete and, and reduce the waste, therefore reducing the embodied carbon of cement and concrete. Now, if you look at uh, this uh, uh, nice snapshot from uh, uh, the recent uh, roadmap issued by the Global Cement and Concrete Association as a road roadmap to a net zero future, you see that uh, this uh, wide range of uh, products and solutions from GCP applies uh, to approximately 60% of uh, the intended actions to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 or sooner. For example, Optiva quality improvers are used to reduce clinker usage. Adva, Mira and other products are used in concrete to improve the efficiency of concrete production. The newest range of CO2 cost reducers families are allowing savings in cement and binders. Tavero grinding aids are also enabling cement producers to reduce their specific energy consumption and notably also to produce during off-peak hours, eventually allowing, for example, to utilize more energy from renewable sources. And also, last but not least, of course, all of the durability and specialty products enable an improvement in the efficiency and in the design and of the construction process with concrete. Now, I'm anticipating a question. Wow, that's interesting, but what extent cement and concrete additives contribute to reducing the CO2 emissions of concrete? Now, uh, we've taken a case study, which we believe is a fairly representative uh, case, in which uh, concrete was produced by emitting 250 kilograms of CO2 per each cubic meter of concrete. We have then estimated what would have been the emissions if no additive was used, no cement additive and no concrete admixture. In GCP's estimate, that would equate to emitting approximately 40 kilograms more of CO2 per cubic meter of concrete, bringing it to 290. In other words, the contribution of current cement additives and concrete admixtures is equivalent to reducing 14% of the embodied carbon of concrete whilst maintaining the same quality and performance. More interestingly, we have also analyzed how much more CO2 could be reduced by utilizing our newest range of technologies and solutions. And we believe the CO2 emissions could be lowered farther down to 200 kilograms of CO2 per cubic meter of concrete. And again, I'm going to show you in a while uh, a few case studies on how that could, have, could uh, be achieved. And uh, if you go back to the baseline case with no additive or no admixture of 290 kilograms of CO2 per cubic meter of concrete, and you think you can reduce it to down to 200 kilograms, that means reducing the total embodied carbon of concrete by over 30%. And if, if you simply multiply that by the total global concrete production, that means reducing over 1 billion tons of CO2 per year by means of cement additives and concrete admixtures. I will say it again, over 1 billion ton per year. Now, if you account for the fact that total man-made emissions from any source is approximately 35 billion tons, that means that you can aim at reducing 3% 
of the anthropogenic emissions just by means of cement additives and concrete admixtures. GCP has therefore introduced a new range of chemical additives and admixtures which are based on new chemicals and the proprietary design process and that are specifically developed to allow a significant reduction in clinker factor in cement production and eventually in cement use in concrete. This proved to reduce CO2 cement factor by up to 10% and even more. And you can see a practical example here in which a customer was uh, trying to increase uh, the one day strength as measured in concrete at 10 degrees. And as you can see, the new CO2 cost reducer additive allowed to, in to increase the strength at one day and 10 degrees Celsius from approximately 28 megapascal to 35 or an increase of 7 megapascal or approximately 25% higher strength, again, as measured in concrete at 10 degrees, which was the intended performance here. So clearly, there's a lot of potential here for further reducing CO2 emissions associated with So how are cement additives delivering their performance in terms of clinker replacement, cement acceleration? and overall reducing CO2. Now, this is a very broad subject, but I thought I'd be giving you a very quick introduction to it. And I'm, of course, uh, very happy to follow up with you shall you have any additional question or comment here. So cement additives are enhancing cement hydration primarily via three mechanisms. First, they increase the rate of hydration. So in this classic paper from Gardner and Meyer in 1993, you see the amount of bound water over a period of time up to 90 days. And as you can see, with increasing dosages of uh, three isopropanol amine, a typical quality improver inter first introduced by GCP, you can see that uh, the amount of water which is bound, so in other words, the amount of water which is reacted with cement is uh, higher at any age and particularly significant from 28 days onwards. Also, very importantly, this uh, action of enhancing uh, the reactivity is uh, very phase specific. So, these chemicals are able to interact with the phases of a clinker, such as the silicates, the aluminates, let alone ferrite and sulfates, as well, um, in different manners. And in this nice paper from Riding and others from 2010, you can see a brilliant example. Um, so this is a calorimetric cure of up to three days where the reference cement with uh, no additive is represented, uh, represented by the green curve. And then you see by the addition of uh, calcium chloride, a well-known uh, early strength uh, accelerator, you see that uh, the uh, main light peak uh, is significantly uh, boosted. You can see it here. Okay, so that's the dotted blue line. Also, the addition of the IPA, another type of alkanolamine, was having a significant impact on the hydration of the aluminate phase and, and the interaction with the sulfates, of course. But more interestingly, if you look at the line uh, in dotted red color, you see that it's different from both. It has a little bit of the effect of enhancing the silicate hydration as well as promoting the aluminate hydration and therefore allowing a customized performance by the synergistic effect of the two chemicals. So this is at the basis of formulating the right product solutions of course, by combining a variety of different chemicals which are suitable for different cement applications. Last but not least, not only we can act on the hydration process itself and on the reagents, notably, of course, the cement phases, but very importantly, we can also act on the morphology of the reaction products, on the shape 
uh, and the distribution and the density they get. So in this very nice study from Nale and Nona, you can see how uh, three enantiomers of the same chemical structure were uh, influencing uh, significantly the morphology of the reaction products uh, and notably of ettringite after one hour and of the AFM phase after 120 hours, showing different uh, shapes and different morphologies of uh, the reaction products. So to summarize, by means of chemicals, it is possible to uh, tailor the reactivity and the reaction products of cement in order to achieve higher strengths, more favorable setting, and more durable products for cement and concrete. Now, the interaction of all the variables we discussed before, you know, different cements, chemistries and morphologies, different reaction products, or all the chemistries that we can add in order to influence them, uh, really makes a very, very complex target to achieve. You know, the permutations um, start to increase quickly and it becomes more and more difficult to match the right performance with the right set of boundaries. GCP has therefore developed uh, a, an application that is uh, helping identifying the problem at the cement plant side, qualify exactly the opportunity in terms of economics, technical requirements and constraints, turn it into a real-time product selection, eventually allowing a valuable solution in a streamlined way. This is a user-friendly real-time product selection app, which is used by GCP personnel. And the next time you meet them, please feel free to ask them to show it because I think it's pretty cool. So this is an app that is built on proprietary data-driven algorithms that are able to match a given set of uh, targets and boundaries with the predicted performance of chemistries in order to produce uh, the customized solution for a given cement application. It allows qualified opportunities via value model-based decision matrices in order to ensure value creation. And it provides a faster and more predictable way to match the cement plant needs with the right cement additive products. Now, I'm going to share a case study in which a cement plant was using a CO2 cost reducer technology to offset the negative impact of replacing clinker with supplementary cementitious materials and eventually achieving a reduction of CO2 of 8%. So in this example, the cement plant was uh, trying to replace the existing cement one with the cement 2AP, with 8% natural porcelain and 4% limestone. So GCP started conducting a series of laboratory tests, eventually identifying um, a CO2 cost reducer product that would outperform the existing reference quality improver. And you can see an example of that on the two uh, graphs on the right. Uh, where calorimetric curves are shown up to 48 hours. And you can see the blank cement with no additive represented by the gray curve. You can see the gray line representative, uh, representing the current quality improver, and then the yellow line representing uh, the CO2 cost reducer uh, new generation of additive. And as you can see, particularly from the cumulative heat curve from 24 to, a, to, to 48 hours, the amount of heat released and therefore the amount of uh, reaction achieved um, at uh, a point in time was significantly higher for the CO2 cost reducer uh, against both the blank and the reference additive. So further laboratory tests were conducted in mortar and concrete, and eventually a field trial was run uh, by the customer, first with the previous cement type, the cement one type. And as you can see in the first table, the CO2 cost uh, uh, reducer tested in the cement type one delivered six megapascals enhancement 
over current additive at 20 days. So again, that's a six megapascal improvement, not against the blank, but really against uh, the existing quality improver. So that allowed uh, the cement plant to start producing the cement 2AP um, in place of the cement one. So a long uh, field trial was uh, conducted and it was possible to prove uh, uh, an equal performance of the cement one and the cement 2AP, as you can see in the second table, uh, uh, where uh, the same two days strengths and the 28 days strengths were maintaining whilst uh, introducing a cement with 8% natural pozzolan on top of the existing limestone, meaning a significant reduction in the embodied carbon of this cement. In the next case study, a cement plant was uh, trying to reduce the amount of uh, fossil fuels used uh, and have used the new CO2 cost reducers range to offset uh, the negative impact from there and eventually achieved a 15% reduction of fossil fuels. So as you can see here, um, after switching from uh, uh, the use of uh, um, a mix of 50% uh, pet coke and 50% uh, fuel oil and trying to switch to 15% uh, refused derived fuel or RDF, the plant experienced a strength loss of 2 to 3 megapascal at all ages in their cement 152.5R. According to GCP evaluations and notably uh, according to uh, microscopic uh, and morphological investigations that was driven by unfavorable killing conditions originated by the switch uh, to 15% alternative fuels. Eventually, the cost reducer was a CO2 cost reducer was uh, used to allow um, a strength increase entirely recovering or even exceeding the strength loss by the switch to the alternative fuels. And as you can see in the example, we now have also the case with no additive, the case with a reference additive, and the case with the new technology. And I would like to point your attention on the difference between the blank cement and the CO2 cost reducer, uh, that is approximately six to seven megapascals at one day and two days, and over 10 megapascals at 28 days. A remarkable performance, I would say. So, to conclude, GCP believes that protecting people and the planet is good for business. And together, GCP and its customers already reduce 23 million tons of CO2 every year. Again, 23 million tons are already reduced by the use of GCP additives. The new CO2 cost reducers and the GCP additive intelligence deliver unmatched performances to reduce the carbon footprint of cement and concrete. And together, we can reduce the embodied carbon by up to 30%. If you have inquiries, I'll be hanging on on the platform for some time. Uh, and you can also reach me out at this email address. Thank you.